Hi, this is me again, and I'd like to have a discussion about JavaScript and objects. Okay, so this will be basic JavaScript, and we won't even include any jQuery. So um, what's an object? Well, an object is a collection of functions and properties, okay? And so to understand that, you have to understand uh, what a variable and what a function is, okay? And uh, when I said functions and properties, properties are another name for variables, okay? Except they're variables that belong to an object, okay? Um, so let's take a quick look at a variable. So in JavaScript, you're going to define a variable with the keyword var, and then you're going to give that variable a name. Like let's say I make a variable named n, and I set it to 10, n for number, right? Um, what if I made a variable called name and I set it to Joe, right? So a variable is an identifier, okay? The name that you give the variable, we call that an identifier. And it's the identifier, you know, stands in for a value. You assign a value to that identifier. And then later on when you want to use the identifier, you know, for example, if I wanted to display this um, the value of n in the console then you know I could put n here and then the computer would see that uh, you know you had an identifier there that represented a value and it would get the value and print the value in place of the identifier let's do a let's do that as a as an example here let me go get um, my window there and uh, open this file in here and we don't see anything here. Um, let me go over the console really quick so everybody understands that. So when you use console.log, this sends a message to the JavaScript console in the browser. And so it, you know it's not a tool that you'll use it to create an actual website. It's a tool for programming and testing your programs. Okay. So essentially, you know, it's like a little window into the workings of our JavaScript. And you know, we can use it to reveal values that are you know running in the program you know so for example here I've assigned a value of 10 to the variable n I mean is that really happening like what is the value of n you know and maybe as my program is running like anything could have happened in here right to change the value of n right and so maybe at this point in my program I want to test the value of n and I want to see what it is right so I say console log and when I'm in the browser, if I, you know, if you control click, I'm in Chrome right now, and this works a little bit differently in Safari and Firefox. But in Chrome, if you hold the control key and you click on the window and choose inspect element, or you can right click also, but I'll choose inspect element. And then when the console opens here, you'll see it, it gives me a bunch of choices, you know, elements, network, source, timeline, profiles, right? And on the end here, it says console. And when I click on console, then you'll see any messages that you've logged to the console. So you can see here, I've logged the value 10, right? And that's maybe, you know, it's a little hard to tell what that is, but you know, if I look on this side, I mean, you know, what, why 10? I mean, anything could have just put those numbers in there, right? I mean, it just happens to be the same number, right, by accident. But on this side, you can see this is the name of my file, jsbasicobjects.html, and then it says colon 14. So what this is telling me is this is telling me the file that generated this log message, and this is the line number in that file where the message was generated. So let's take a look, right? So that says, you know, my file name colon line 14. And when I look here, you can see that um, actually, you know, I, I guess I change this. I move this to line 17. Let's save that and we'll see if it shows up on line 17. Um, oh, look, now it says line 17, right? So I've added those line returns before, you know, before I, te after I tested that last time. But yeah, you can see this is now on line 17, right? And maybe I'm not sure that this is exactly the message, right? So let's let's log that other message, right? So I'll say console, oops, uh, console.log, and then let's log name, 
right? So uh, I'll refresh the browser here. And then it says, you know, on line 17, it says 10. And then on line 18, it says Joe. So yeah, so those are the messages that I'm getting, right? Um, and they're coming from my program. And indeed, when I use the identifier or the variable name, I get the value. Okay, so that's what's key here. Okay, so um, you know, you know, you can create variables to hold any kind of value in JavaScript. You can assign any value to a variable, and it can change over time. So, for example, you know, I've assigned a number, right, to n, and in JavaScript, a number can be any type of number. So you can say, you know, ten is a number. You can say. 11.3 is a number, you can, 0 is a number, you know, um, 111.0001 is a number, right? So the, all those are numbers. You can do, you know, negative 36 is a number, right? Um, this line is a string, and a string is a literal value. It's the string of characters, right? So if you want to print something out like somebody's name, a message, the text from a, a post on your website, um, you know, you're going to use a string for that because you want to string together a, a list of characters, okay? So a string is always defined between a pair of quotation marks. And you can use either the double or the single quote. So, uh, you know, for example, you could say single quote Joe. Or we can do double quote Joe, and these are the same. And anything can be a string. You can even do this and create an empty string. So here's a string with no characters in it. Here's a string with a single space in it, and those are totally legal, okay? Um, so you can use the double or the single quote. You have to begin and end with the same quotation mark. So if you have something where, you know, you want to say like, you know, that's, right? You know, uh, here I have a quotation mark inside the quotation mark, and that's okay if I have the single quote inside the double quotes, right? But if I if I want to put a double quote inside the quotation marks, then I have to use the single quote on the outside, right? Okay, so I can put the double quote inside there, and that's okay. And this will be the character that gets printed, right? Um, so anyway, so there's a string. So a string is any string of characters. We use it as a literal value or a value that you know, is more descriptive maybe than number, right? Okay, so so anyway, so those are our, our, you know, basic variables and two basic types that JavaScript has. JavaScript has another value that's a little more complex, right? Uh, you know, imagine we want to, you know, describe someone, and I don't want to use N here, I want to use age maybe. So maybe Joe is, you know, 40, right? I'll have to get rid of this right here, make that age, right? So, you know, maybe I have, I want to describe a user, right? And I have their, I have their name, their age, and maybe, you know, um, some other information about them, like their shoe size, okay? Right? Nine and a half, okay? Um, so we can put all this together each in a separate variable, but this becomes a little bit of a problem because it's hard to, you know, aggregate these things and pass them around, you know, in order to, you know, you know, and you'll see later as we need to pass these, these values around in our program for it to work with it. And here we'd have to pass three values every time, right? And if we want to expand on this, we, you know, to make a second user, I'd have to create a second set of variables, you know, age one, age two, eight, or name one, and shoe size one, right, and age two, name two, shoe size two, right, that would be very, you know, complicated and, you know, just require too much code. Um, so JavaScript provides an, an element called an object, and I'll make an object here, and it looks like that. It's got the curly braces, okay? And an object, like I said when I began, is a collection of, of properties and, and functions, or properties and methods, sometimes they say. Method is another word for function, and property is another word for variable, right? Uh, an object can have, have these properties assigned to it, and it can have multiple properties, right? So, but then it's represented by a single identifier, okay? So, 
So if I wanted to convert all of this into a single object, what I could do is I could say age colon 40 comma name colon string Joe comma shoe size colon nine and a half. Okay, so here we have an object. It has three properties, age, name, and shoe size, and each of those properties has a value. And you can assign anything to the value, even another object or a function or, you know, a lot of things, okay? So how do we work with the object? Well, here's where I got the age and the name the first time. Let's give that a quick test again, right? So I'll refresh, and you can see now I've got 40 and Joe, right? So what if I wanted to, you know, not use age and name, right? And I wanted to use the object instead. Well, to get the values from the object, I can say console.log. And then I'll say object. Dot, and then you'll see actually, you know, uh, brackets is code hinting me. And it sees that I've created this object and it has these properties. And so it you know, it goes ahead and kind of guesses that I might want to use one of those properties, right? So I can hit the dot, and then it shows me, you know, age right there. And then I could say, you know, oops, console.log object.name, right? And console.log object.shoe uh, size. Right, so, so to create an object, you use the curly brackets, and each element in the uh, in the object is separated by a comma, and each element is made up of two parts: a property name followed by the colon, and the value assigned to that property. Okay, so uh, you know our, you know, we might mock up our an object like this, like property colon value comma you know property number two colon value number two etc right and then to access a property of an object you'll use the object identifier followed by the comma or i mean by the dot and the the name of the property okay so we just say the variable name or the identifier name and the dot and then the property let's give that a test so if everything is working I'll refresh, and then here you can see I see Joe, or I see 40, you know, age, Joe, and uh, 9.5 for the shoe size. And then these are the other two from the original variables, okay? So hopefully that's helpful, and you'll see that we use a lot of that um, in, um, you know, in future lessons when we work with Parse and more with jQuery, okay? So ho hope that was helpful to someone. Thanks for watching.